outliers using the two standard deviations method. Okay, so first off the bat, the reason we're going to use the two standard deviation method is because of the empirical rule. The empirical rule was designed by the emperor of statistics, bah, 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 but in a nutshell, it says this. In a normal data set, important, normal data set, that about two-thirds, 68% of your data should fall between one plus or minus standard deviation away from the mean, 95%, which is the most used figure we're going to, the percentage here, right? That's our competence intervals are always 95%. Should be most of your data, in fact, 95% of your data should fall between the mean plus or minus two standard deviations. And practically all of your data falls within three standard deviations of the mean plus or minus. So, again, 95%, that's the, that's the competence interval. So, that's what we're going to use to identify outliers. So, any piece of data that we turn into a z-score, and if that z-score is greater than two, Right or less than negative two, we're going to call, go ahead and call them an official outlier because that would put them in these little tiny tips of the of the uh, normal distribution frequency or the bell curve, right? So I'll say that again. Any z-score that is greater than two ends up in this little outcast zone, as does if it's less if if the z-score is less than negative two. Same place it gets in the outcast zone. Now, with that said, I have read books where they consider an outlier anything greater than three standard deviations or less than three standard deviations away from the mean, which, you know, I can kind of follow the logic, but I tend to lean towards uh, the 95% rule. So that's, that's how I'm going to show you how to do these real quick. So hold on. We have blood pressure, years married, and age. We're going to go ahead and check them for outliers using the two standard deviation rules. So go to Analyze. Descriptives. Descriptives again. Get back in there. You boom. So we're gonna go ahead and kick those over. Very important. This little tiny box down here on the bottom. Save standardized variables, values as variables. So it's gonna turn every piece of data into a z-score. Okay. So we're gonna go back and Look at our raw data. There it is. Okay, so blood pressure. You're going to click on that. Right click. Sort descending. So nobody's greater than point or 2, right? So there's no outliers on top. But we also got to look at the bottom. Uh-oh. This, this data set has 1, 2, 3, 4 outliers on the bottom. Hmm, interesting. So that's blood pressure. Let's look at years married. Right click, descending. Yes, you have one outlier on top. It's greater than two. Let's go down to the bottom. No outliers on the bottom. So years married has one. And let's do age. Right click, descending. Again, we're just putting the z-scores in largest to smallest. And age, you got one, two, three, four. You got four on top. And these are your old timers, God bless them, that are 78 and above. But let's see if there's anybody on the bottom. And yeah, you got some youngsters too. One, two, three, four. So age has four on top, four on bottom. Years married has one on top. Blood pressure, I believe, had a couple on the bottom down there. Maybe just one on the bottom. Let me double check that for you. Right click, descending. Yeah, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four on the bottom. So that's it for that. But let me show you another method that some people use. It's called the box plot method. But hold on a second. All right, back to our data set. We're going to go to analyze. This time we're going to go to descriptive statistics. We're going to go to explore. We're after that box plot. Let's put our variables back in a dependent box. It's blood pressure, years, and age. Outliers. That's not a good way to find outliers, believe it or not. It's going to give you extreme values, but they're not always outliers. So it's kind of um, ambivalent at best. So continue. Quick plots. I hope you saw that. Uh, we don't use a seven belief anymore. We do use a histogram, but that's for normality. Sometimes histograms can show you outliers as well. Might as well check normality while we're here. Now here's the box plot. It's automatically set under the 
analyze descriptives explorer button you're automatically going to get box plot so let's click okay what am i missing here i don't think i'm missing anything and we'll just click okay so these are the these are the different ways to look for outliers and could could be a couple down here anything that's off the normal qq plot this is probably an outlier some of these are probably outliers this is a mess. Don't use that. But you'll notice, according to the box plot, there are no outliers, right? If it was an outlier, there'd be a little circle above or below with the ID number next to it, okay? So according to this, there is no outliers. That's a mess. This could be an outlier. That can be an outlier. And again, this box plot says no outliers for years married. And the ages, yeah, you got a couple that are way off the line here. So there's a couple outliers up here and down there. And according to this, there is one age outlier. It is number three guy here. So, and that, that's the third guy. That's not the value of the actual outlier. So you would go back to your data set and find the third guy. There's the third guy on age, right? He's 82. You know, God bless him. He's old. But that's how you do it. So, I again, I strongly suggest you use the two standard deviation method to identify outliers because it's what most of the rest of us do. So that's it. Hope it helps. MGZ out.